JP here who's been waiting patiently and has something to say. So I'd like if everyone can please remain quiet and allow JP some time to speak. So go ahead, brother. Breathe it out. Got this, JP. You got her, JP. We're with you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. My name is JP Salmon. I'd like to thank everybody for bringing the food and the drinks at the celebration of life. Whoever that guy is yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Fraser. Thank you, Fraser. Thank you, Fraser. As a person with mental disabilities, this pandemic has changed my life in so many ways. A day program where I go to and seeing everyone, the staff, my friends, it was, it was canceled when they locked down the world. No more having fun, no more being free and independent. There was total social distance, no hugging, total stay home. My appointments got canceled, we scheduled. <laughs> Someone's confusing quickly, turning turn into fear. In all, in all aspects of my life, including being being made the question by uh, Robert B. Oh, awesome. <laughs> my best friend and all of you and your moms. I can remember thinking at the time, holy shit, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're all so kind. <laughs> and welcoming in the darkest, loneliest time in my life. Being told no hugging hurts, hurts me the most. Why you should ask? What does hurts mean to me? Hurts bring me joy, it brings me comfort, confidence, and brings me a soul connection to a friend or a family member. It's like two beautiful kindred souls becoming one person. Sets your spirits free and also eases anxiety and stress temporarily. I believe the world needs peace, love, all the happiness and prosperity in the world. Damn, wait. <laughs> no more wars, no more corruption, no more anger, no more pain and suffering. It breaks my heart to see friendships and relationships strained and fell apart and people fighting on social media. We're not supposed to be fighting each other. We're supposed to be loving each other, supporting each other, being open and honest and, and free to do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> 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 yes! yes. yes. <laughs> to be staying together as one group. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One last thing. I want to thank you. Thank you to Colin and the Hearts of a Mass team, Colin, Tanya, uh, Sally, Vlad, Lamont, Joseph, and everyone here for educating the masses about our rights and our freedom. We are all the educators, the teachers we all need in this crazy fucking world with right now. <laughs> If anyone needs a friend to talk to, feel free to message me and like our Facebook page, Hamilton Rock Salmon, at www.facebook.com slash Hamilton Rock Salmon. Yep. Hamilton Rocks. Zamit. Zamit. Z A M M I T. We Hamilton both, Rocks Zamit. We both created. Amazing. <laughs> One more thank you. Thank you for all the hugs. <laughs> You're amazing. Yay. Everyone, everyone has to give him a hug. Yeah. 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 Yeah, guys, give it up for JP. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, but that literally brought the truth to my heart. That was, that was powerful, emotional, and so true. Um,
fighting for the children is who we are fighting for yes. and just like JP said we cannot let anger consume us we cannot feed into this because the people that we are arguing with you know these sheep they're brainwashed it's not their fault they are not the enemy they might say hateful things they might attack us the way we look the way we act what we believe in but they are not the enemy so we must come from a place of compassion when we speak to these people. Right? I, I agree with that. Yes. But, yes. but here's the thing, here's my problem. Yep. Is that how long are we gonna let them continue to give away our freedom? Well, we're giving it up. We're gonna fight them. This we're is the thing, when we talk time. about our freedoms being taken away, a lot of the times we're giving them up. So how long are we gonna allow this to happen? How long this is what I want to talk about because this, this is what I really wanted to talk about today. Was the second wave is coming. Yeah. Okay, we know that the days you of us the, election, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the days of us believing that they won't do it. Oh, they won't do that. They're, they're gone. Yeah. What we think they're going to do, they are going to do. So what we need to do now is start talking to one another. That's what this is event is about. It's to talk about what are we going to do about it. So when we end up, when we wake up one day, maybe in two weeks, maybe in two months, maybe in November, and we're in the second wave, the second lockdown, curfew. What are we going to do True about curfew. it? Right? We got to have these conversations. We got to talk about it. Because you know how you you know how you eliminate all of this? Very simple. No. I do not consent. You must take a vaccine. No. You must stay inside. No. This is what we need to do. But we need to grow this movement. We need to grow our numbers. We need to wake people up. But you're not going to wake people up with anger. If you come at them, yes, you have to come from a place of firmness, but also love. So it's that it's that place of love, compassion, right? But also firmness. Stand your ground. Don't waver. Don't bend at the knee for, for these people. But also, you just you can't fight them. And so what, what I want to mention is we're doing these celebrations of life here, but we're also meeting on Wednesdays. For anyone that doesn't know, we meet at Gore Park, right? There's a core team. So that's the true activism. That's when we get out and we have these difficult conversations. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it, you, you know, it's, it's a little bit uh, kind of socially awkward when you're challenging someone's beliefs. But there's, there's, there's something way more important than our comfort going on right now. Okay? The days of us being comfortable are gone. They took that from us. So now we have to get uncomfortable. We have to do more. We have to get out and grow this movement. We need to build it. We need to wake people up. Nobody's going to do it for us unless we do it, guys. So on Wednesday, if you guys, or any other day, by all means, it doesn't take a whole army to do this. Two people can go out. We have the cards on that table there. Please grab a stack. Do it in your condo buildings, in your subdivisions, parking lots, whatever. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That's what we need to do. We need to get this message out. Yes. I approach very like, you know, yes. I go like this and if they're willing to take yep. it, then yes. I think, okay, that's yeah. a good step. By all means. Yes. And then By I talk else. to them. If they back away, then I just I just I keep going Move to the next person. But when I do Don't this, push, yeah. if they go to reach, go. then I have that conversation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I love you. What a challenge. I just want to say one thing here. Um, when you're arguing with people who are angry and they're whatnot, of course, it's Without saying, you have to remain calm and stick to uh, facts, logic, and reason. But you're going to find that both of those people aren't going to listen to your facts, logic, and reason. But somebody observing you may. And this is what you have to keep in mind. Your argument, is, even if it's not going to change the person's opinion that you're arguing with, if you remain calm and cool and collected and stick to facts and reason, 
it will sway people who are third party observers. Yep. So keep that in mind. Yeah, actually, I don't know if you guys and Especially when people are yelling at you angrily, saying you're the idiot, like this woman. Is this is infectious. This, is this, yeah. this young Amen. woman who accused me of killing her grandmother last week because I wasn't wearing a mask. And I'm like, but I never met your grandmother. Uh, those people look like idiots to a to an observer. So if you remain being the non-idiot, then they'll be more likely to hear your position and uh, and come to your side. Um, so I mean, I know I am guilty of it. Somebody starts yelling, calling me names. I just you know respond in kind, and, and I know that that doesn't catch. That doesn't catch the um, the attention in a positive way right, exactly. of, of the and, and so always remember that the third party observers when you are arguing or debating a point. Yep. Another way to another way to yeah, thank you. Um, another way to do it is to face it through spirituality rather than coming from like a political you know angle. Um, spirituality can really kind of grab people. Not only that, I've had people. Like my Facebook Messenger is blown up with people from the background who aren't commenting, who aren't um, getting involved or, or in any of the banter going back and forth, um, saying thank you for speaking your truth. I cannot comment because I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a mother, or whatever it is. And thank you so much, and don't, and don't give up the fight. So people are, you are affecting people, even if you don't realize you're yep. That's it. Yeah. Another powerful tool, guys, is questions. You know, asking these questions, these questions, all these questions that we have that are unanswered. Are you just feeling well today? Seats. Right. Exactly. These questions, you know. I wouldn't come to the store if I there's, wasn't. There's a right. lot. Wow. We're actually going to make a flyer. The next flyer we make is going to have a list of questions. So I've got over 300 Ooh. questions. Oh, amazing. And we're collecting oh, yeah. just the best ones, Excellent. right? Amazing. So these are going to act as seeds. And that's what it's all about, right? It's like the parable of the sower. I don't know uh, to get religious, but when you, when you plant these seeds and wake people up, once they're awake, they're awake forever. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. Uh, we want to get Jack, it's Jack, right? Yeah. Jack up here, he has a very interesting angle. Um, if you guys could please give him your attention because there's a lot to understand, but it's really interesting. The Police Services Act, Ontario, section 1.2, the duty of the police is to safeguard the fundamental rights and freedoms and the human rights code. Section one of the Canadian Constitution, you have all your rights and freedoms unless they're demonstrably justified not to. The Premier and the Lieutenant Governor never gave the reasoning sworn, certified, coroners, names, nothing. Police failed to do the job of safeguarding fundamental rights and freedoms. Thank you. Now, Section 80 and 81 of the Police Services Act misconduct. Anybody who tells a cop not to do their job is also guilty of misconduct, as well as the officer not doing their job is guilty of misconduct. Section 126 of the Canadian Criminal Code, failing to obey a statute, is a criminal code offense, time in jail. Okay, this is the police. Wow. Okay, now I've always said, I don't really want to be at this park. I want to be at the police station. Ooh. Okay, I believe, I'm not telling you to move from here, I believe we should always be at a police station, one where there's more parking than not. And I have a document on executivereasoning.com, court ready, ready to go to hold them privately liable. Wow. In 1959, the Premier of Quebec, Maurice Duplessis, did something outside of statutory authority to a restaurateur. The restaurateur sued the Premier while he was in office and won. The Premier appealed and lost the appeal, upholding that if you act outside of statutory authority, you're privately liable. Mm -hmm. Section 6B of the Canadian Constitution, you have a right to gaining of a livelihood. Okay? Where are the police safeguarding fundamental rights, freedoms and the human rights code? Section 1.2 Police Services Act. 